Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Talk of the Town. Now, we try to have a different show for you every, uh, every once in a while, and boy, we have a different one today, don't we? And this was just put together in the last few hours, so you just never know what's going to come across our desk. Uh, I got contacted about a performance that's going to be happening at Milton High School on Thursday, September 3rd at the auditorium, and it's going to be the Artane Band from Dublin Island is going to be the headliner there. And then there's going to be some other guests. We have uh, Pauline Wells. Do you know Pauline Wells, Chief Wells? I don't Wells? know. I don't know. <laughs> Related to Chief Wells in an intimate way. And uh, the Boston Police Gaelic column will be with us and uh, Milton High School Strings Ensemble. So I started asking questions. You know, they, want, they asked me if I would tell the folks in Milton about the uh, performance. And I said, well, who is this Artane Band? And I've talked here with Mary Swanton. Mary, you're a Milton resident. Milton resident. And Mary, you're kind of behind this whole this whole thing that's going to be happening, this performance coming up. So why don't you start us off, and then we'll, we'll key in with Seamus over here. Well, we have, I'm sorry. I, I haven't introduced everyone, have I? That's pretty rude, aren't I? So we'll start with the, uh, the, the women of the group here. We have Mary Swanton, and Mary um, is a resident of Milton. We have Chief, Chief Wells, also a resident of Milton. And then we have a resident of Braintree. We have Seamus Mulligan. You might have heard him on, what's the radio channel? Feast of Irish Music on WROL 950 AM every Sunday from 1 to 5. I don't think anyone in Milton has ever tuned into that channel. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> More than you know. And most of these folks have only seen him on the radio, so does he look as good as he sounds? <laughs> so, Mary, back to the Artane Band playing at Milton High School. Tell the folks what's going on. Well, the Artane Band are synonymous with Irish culture worldwide. They're fondly known as the biggest little band in the world. Um, they play for all of the major games for Irish sports in Croke Park, which is the home of Irish sport on the island of Ireland. Um, Croke Park. Croke, Croke Park. Park. Okay. So they're coming out for a tour, a Massachusetts tour, and we began the collaboration last October when the conductor of the band came out for a long weekend, and I said I'll call a couple of people, and one of them being Chief Wells, knowing his interest and love of music and getting young people together. And of course, he stepped up to the plate, and um, it, it's grown from there. It's been a major collaborative. We're celebrating the 20th anniversary of the Irish Cultural Centre of New England, which is next door in Canton, and also celebrating the 50th anniversary of the founding of the North American Board for the Gaelic Athletic Association, and that's the Association of Irish Sport Worldwide. The Gaelic Athletic Association in Ireland is celebrating its 125th anniversary this year, and the band have been playing with them and synonymous with the GAA for over 100 years. So to have the band come to Massachusetts for this celebration with the Gaelic Athletic Association here is a perfect fit. It's a big deal. It's a big deal. A and big now, deal. These, are, um, these are boys and girls. Boys and girls. And what are their ages? 12 to 18. And about how many members? 60. So there's 60. So it's quite an entourage. Well, probably with chaperones. There's uh, probably about 100 people coming over, uh, right? 108. Mommies 100? and daddies okay. and aunties and uncles. Wow. And so um, I know there's some history here. So I'm going to go over to Seamus because Mary told me about this. And then she referred me to Seamus. And that's how, when the idea of the show came about. Because uh, why don't you tell a little bit of the history. And then we're going to talk about the impact of, of music on society in general. Well, first of all, the Artane Boys Band, as Mary indicated, it is a household word in Ireland. And anybody who has ever watched on television, heard on radio, or being live at the Croke Park, which is the national stadium, which accommodates 82,000 people for all the major events there, they have personally experienced the Artane. We're not going to be able to fit that many in Milton High School. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> it's two and a half Fenway Park. Yes, right. <laughs> but anyway, it was very, very successful. And their first debut, I, just by way of a little history, the Artane Boys School was originally an industrial school. And the British government, in its infinite wisdom, had felt that, you know, there were an awful lot of children who might have been abandoned or abused or were delinquent. And they thought they should have a boarding facility for them. So it was very important that if you had a boarding facility, you had to have something to do for them. One was to teach them a trade, but on the other hand, all work and no play, so they decided that they would supplement this with music. And consequently, an awful lot of the children, because it was a beautiful assignment, volunteered to join the band. 
And of course that has grown since 1972, actually even four years before the Gaelic Athletic Association. The school uh, was a tough place. Uh, it was also enlarged then to handle young delinquents. But of course the music was a great distraction for these people. And then it became legendary because with the founding of the Gaelic Athletic Association, you know, it was one of these situations, it was a marriage made in heaven, and of course prior to television, of course they were known through their radio appearances, but in anticipation... You wouldn't know anything about radio, would no, you? No, no, no. <laughs> I, have, I have the proper haircut for radio. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm getting it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So what had happened was that uh, they came, uh, before this was announced here, they had an opportunity to have a very, very rare visit to the residence of the American ambassador to Ireland, and that is uh, the, the key portion or the beginning of the overall trip, which is coming over here. So I'll go to Mary, and Mary will tell us there is quite a schedule for these people, or as they say over in that other country, a schedule. So Mary, why don't you tell us a little bit about the <laughs> schedule? Their schedule. Yeah. Well, the band are arriving on Thursday, August 27th, and they depart from Logan to go directly to Worcester. And we're working there with the Lieutenant Governor of Massachusetts, Tim Murray, and with the AOH in Worcester. And they're putting on a concert on Friday, August 28th at the Hanover Theatre in Worcester, which is an incredible venue. It's just been completely restored and the band are very excited to have received invitation for that. And then on Saturday morning, they arrive in Braintree. They're going to be staying at the Sheridan Tara. And then they're in residence at the Irish Cultural Centre in Canton for Saturday and Sunday because... That's the weekend of the regional finals for the GAA Games. Teams from throughout Massachusetts gather and they have their tournaments, as you will, um, that weekend. So the band will lead the teams for Saturday and Sunday. Monday, they're on a very special day off. Um, they're heading to Canopy Lake and I hand it over to Captain Wells, who well, stepped now up I to can't, the plate I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry. The chief himself. Sorry, the chief himself. Excuse Mary me. had asked that, uh, <laughs> and I suppose for anyone who's watching that's ever been to Ireland, they know the difference just in, in the daily life as far as school. In Ireland, kids go home for school still for lunch every day. In our schools in America, kids have lunch in cafeterias, things like that. And Mary had felt there was a day off that uh, we wanted them to have uh, some type of experience that kids, place kids go to all the time. So we're going to take all 100 and plus of these kids, parents, chaperones, uh, courtesy of many residents of the town, to Canopy Lake uh, for the day when the Milton Police Department is going to chaperone and take care of the staff that trip. That's very nice. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, it Excellent. It's great. It's great. And, and they're really looking forward to it. Man, oh man. Now you said that, uh, well, before we go any further, you could use some help with some of these logistical things. Like, um, So what, we're going to put on the screen, we're going to give you a, a contact, we'll put your email on the sure, screen. absolutely. If you uh, want to help out with, um, they, they could use some funds obviously to help with some of the meals, with some of the transportation costs, they're going to need to get some coaches to get the group from Worcester to, to Braintree on that on that one of those mornings. So um, there are some areas where they could use some help. So if you have some connections or something and you want to help out uh, with the Artane Band's expenses here while they're in Massachusetts, that would be appreciated. So you can contact Mary. I'll leave her email for you. And um, now you were telling us, Seamus, that so it started out as a, kind of almost like a reform school or a boarding school, and, and then it evolved over time. And you were telling me how because of the band, Tell me about the police and the fire department in Ireland, Some of the, how the Artane band evolved over time. And well, it was all boys at one time, correct? Of course. Okay. And it was, it was deemed to be the foremost one in the country and also a great basis for the training of these younger folk. Well, some of them had been delinquents, but however, they had changed their ways when they went there. So as a result of that, when the Irish police force was formed and subsequently the army during that period of independence, they had decided it was appropriate that they should have a band. So they used all of the graduates of this Artean band and they took them in as a, it became a feeder for the bands for the military and also for the Garda Shirkana, which is the National Police Force. And all of these people then went mainstream 
and did very, very well in their careers as musicians in either policing or in military. Now, since most boarding schools have closed down, a lot of them and things like that, how do they get their members now? It's just a people they recruited, uh, musicians from schools, or how do you get, become a member of the Artane Band today? Uh, well, first of all, as you pointed out, the, the school as we knew it at that time, sure. I think people are much more enlightened, and it was deemed really a place of punishment, which really wasn't a very good idea. They've discovered that, you know, a little spoonful of sugar makes the medicine go down. You know, rather Did you than, sing that for rather than the, <laughs> rather than the cat yeah, nine, <laughs> Rather than the cat and nine tails. So as a result of that, now, they first of all, enlightenment again. You tell them. these folks right here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they, they had the enlightenment, of course, and they brought in the women. So now it's, uh, it is a It's a much better looking group now. It is, without a doubt. But I think one thing which is very, very striking, almost a hallmark of them, why don't you describe the uniform that they have, Mary? The uniform is royal blue with red trim and a bright orange stripe on the pants, and that has not changed for over a hundred years, years, I believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 they've yeah. been in the same. And what kind of instruments? Brass and wind. Brass and wind. Brass. There were brass and wind. No bagpipes or anything like that. No. No. Okay. No. But we're going to arrange for that. For them. There's going to be some bagpipes there, Boston, though. Boston, Boston. Boston. <laughs> yeah, they're well, going to jump right the, in. The three of us all have our interests in Irish music, and I sometimes I think, in the, even in a community like this, which has such deep Irish mm -hmm. heritage roots. I don't think that many Irish Americans realize the effect of Irish music in this country, in rock and roll, in country western. I mean, how many American artists have the gone? How many have gone to Ireland perform? How many Irish songs have been sung by Irish? I mean, you listen to to Seamus on Sundays off. You listen to Hit Parade on Saturdays. You'll hear everyone from Johnny Cash to modern day artists singing Irish tunes or vice versa. A huge, huge effect. You cannot in you and I were speaking before the show started. You cannot go to Ireland for a day or two days and not go in a pub or a house and not be present for a sing song. That's right. Someone's That's going right. to get up and start to sing, and it's going to become contagious and one another. In right. that that mindset, that philosophical love of music. of music emanates from kids like this. It's just it's a huge thing, and it, and it resounds throughout the world. And we should be very fortunate. I, I'm very lucky, and I'm glad. I'm a it's changed my life being involved in music. I never thought of playing a band. Now, how did you get involved with the um, the we, Boston uh, the police Boston pipes and drums? Is, that is a historical story. Oh, hold on, we got itself. incoming. Incoming. That's a new Milton police helicopter. It's <laughs> <laughs> uh, Homeland Security. Got <laughs> it with the override, buddy. <laughs> Thanks to you. <laughs> no. <laughs> My involvement was uh, simplistic. The, the history of the Boston Police Guild come, and there's a lot of roots from this town in, that are involved in it now. But it began. Her brother, her brother Joe, was an all island piper from Limerick. He was one of my first pipe instructors. That's right. And he was one of my first pipe instructors. And uh, you play the bass drum, I'm, don't I you? Play, I play about well, three different drums, but I, I'm most well known for playing that big bass drum on a shame. Probably, probably very few could carry it. <laughs> very few would want to carry it. Um, the Gale Comb was formed when a, a, a policeman from High Park of Reedville, a boss which was killed in an explosion mm -hmm. in 1992. And that police officer, Jerry Hurley, was a classmate of Bill Bratton, who at the time was the police chief of the New York City Plant Transit Police. And when he came to Jerry's funeral, he didn't come by himself. He brought the New York City Police Transit Emerald Society pipe in with him. And people were so taken back that a group of Boston police officers got together and said, Two weeks later, come to Doyle's if you want. We're going to start our own band, and that was the history of it. And, and in the 17 years that have passed, God, we'll probably perform thousands of performances. We say we've been to Ireland seven times. We we'll play everything from the Constitution to the. We just played for the President of Ireland at the ICC just mm -hmm. a month ago. Um, not to mention many civic funerals. Sure. Probably, I think 38 line of duty deaths for police mm -hmm. officers. We've played it too many of these funerals for young soldiers and marines that have come back, that have been killed. All. And the roots, and not just myself, uh, Joe Chivas, from, who's the pipe major, he's the brother and brother of uh, Mary Ellen Gary, brother-in-law of George Gary, who was the president of Milton Hospital. John Landers, a famous Boston Herald photographer, his son John, a transit cop, he's a piper. Eddie Walsh, uh, uh, Boston detective Sean Walsh, who's Mary, works in Mary Gormley's office, his final plays in the band. There's 30 of us. And, uh, 
music, it's it's a different thing than just saying, you know, well, my name's, you know, Brian Kelly, I have an Irish surname. Irish music has a dramatic impact in the world, and it starts with these young kids. But it also has such an impact on the neighborhood. Oh, you know, you yeah. see cops, they're not cops. Here they are. You know, they love yeah. music, and they're participating, and they're also giving. So I think what it does is it embellishes and, 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 and improves the image that you would have of law enforcement. You know, it's very, very beneficial. Absolutely. And that's why, you know, the armies have them too. Well, you mentioned something, I talked to you earlier on the phone, about the border school and something that happened there in Ireland. Cross-border. Cross-border school. So who, wants to, who would like to speak about that? Mary is probably better equipped. That was a, a program that we ran um, in... Two ago? Well, we did it in 2005, and then we did it again in 2007. 2007 had more impact. There was an orchestra found in Ireland um, during the, uh, just coming out of the Troubles where a music teacher said, you know, we've got... Catholic children, we've got Protestant children, and they're not coming together. Their mothers and fathers grew up in the troubles. They won't speak to each other. Mm -hmm. So as a music teacher, she found, she opened a closet in a school, and she found all these instruments. And that was her sign. And she said, I'm going to get these refurbished, and we're going to bring some kids together. I'm going to put them in a room. We're going to give them an instrument. And that became the beginning of the cross-border orchestra. And it's now 150 members strong. It's, uh, the conductor is Garou Grant, who is the foremost conductor on the island of Europe, on the island of Ireland, and is, is way up there in the European circle as well. So they came to the States. I work in Dorchester. I'm the fine arts director for Pope John Paul II Catholic Academy. Now, are you doing something similar over there, in um, a sense? We have very similar. We have 30, 30 cultures represented in the academy. 30 and cultures. And we started a music program there a few years ago just primarily let's bring children together where the difference is no difference they're from every religion and none we give them an instrument and they come together on common ground mm -hmm. and they learn together and they grow so the cross-border orchestra came over in 2007 we put together a choir from 10 schools in boston mm -hmm. 500 kids wow. and we put them on stage in symphony hall with this orchestra and it was absolutely phenomenal it was a great great experience Mm -hmm. So we love doing this, you know, and, and the chief is right, the, po the, the power of the song, you know, you, you hear a song, you're driving in your car, and it, it brings you back to a point in your life, there's nothing will spark a memory for you more than a song. And it makes you smile. It makes you smile. It changes your attitude. And I'll, I'll tell you, in all my years of being involved in music and working with groups like this and, and bringing them over and back, um, nobody seems to evoke a more sincere delivery of Irish, the Irish song than Pauline Wells. And I've, I've seen her, I've seen her. We're before. talking about the Chief's wife, folks. Been, oh, and, and she's and gonna be at this event on September it. 3rd. I would that. say it if she wasn't, if he wasn't here. Uh -huh. She has a sincerity, and I, I think most of the town of Milton has seen her perform, and she's gonna be on a Wilbur Theater on 9-11 for a remarkable opportunity and performance and an honor for her um, but she does you know when Pauline sings you listen and it stirs mm -hmm. a memory mm -hmm. and and that's the gift of music you know whether it's it's vocal or instrumental and a big part of this tour is not just the music it's we were we worked very hard on cultural enrichment so like the students in Dublin have never be, seen an American football field Okay. So they're going to play on an American football field for the first time. They're going to eat in a high school cafeteria. They've never done they that They may not before. want to do that. <laughs> that will be a they, memory. They, they, uh -oh, if it's pizza they, day, it'll be good. It's good if it's pizza, pizza, pizza day. If Jackie Morgan watch yeah. it, I'm just kidding. <laughs> if it's pizza day, it'll be good. It doesn't, it's just, it's so different. What the, what the members of the band grow up with in Ireland is mm. so, there's so much of a contrast. Mm -hmm. And they are loading up on high school musical, watching the high schools over here. Um, and they're really looking forward to that. So the whole day, September 3rd, they're going to school yeah, with kids in Milton. So uh, that's, and, and the kids are more excited about that, I think, than any that's of their performances. That's a pretty cool thing for them, I think. I, they're doing it also in Melrose, but it's just that they're, they're not going to have, I think it, it's more poignant here because it's the entire day, and then they're coming back to do a concert for the community, and it's the last night of their tour. So Very it's nice. almost like it's nice everything is coming together. Now. And then, by the way, if their tour ends just in time to get them back yes. to Croke Park to participate in the All-Ireland Hurling Final. Oh, which that's is right. Saturday, isn't the it? Sixth. Sixth. They it's arrive in Saturday morning and on Sunday morning they're, they're playing. Yeah. I knew they were playing that week. Yeah, yeah. 
They do 50 concerts a year. Wow. Well, it's funny. We were speaking about this, and uh, when you asked about, you know, if you know anyone with transportation and everything, so I thought of co contacting the Boston Crusaders. So I called the Senior Corps, the director of the Senior Corps, and uh, had a conversation with him, and they, they don't have any buses. They just rent them as mm -hmm. they go. So I couldn't help you there. And then we got talking about the Irish Festival and everything. Well, the Boston Crusaders are a similar type of organization as the Artane Band. Mm -hmm. Years ago, it was started in the city, and well, in all the communities, it was run by you know, a lot of the VFW posts supported them. Um, right here in Dorchester, right on um, River Street, uh, post 8699, they hosted them. A lot of the CYO, there were a lot of CYO bands. That's right. And it gave the kids a chance to get off the streets. My cousins played, my grandfather played, and um, they brought people together, gave them something in common. Yep. Kept them out of trouble exactly. and gave them a sense of self worth. Yeah. And today, the senior corps marches, and they just put a performance on in Lawrence, and they do exhibitions. And they had a gentleman come out. He's in his late seventies, and he came out on a walker, out to the field, picked up his horn, and played with the whole crew. Like I mean, wow. it, throughout your whole life. And so, um, yeah. it's just fascinating that what music can do. And I know you talked to uh, Patricia Ostrom, and she's helping out bring the Milton High School That's string right, ensemble. The strings, yeah. Yeah. I know my daughter plays in strings, and we'll be at the high school this year, and it's just done. The music program in Milton has been one of the things that have attracted us to the Milton Public School. That's right. And we have to remember that we need, that music is a oh, key right. ingredient. I mean, in Boston, they just had an article about athletics mm -hmm. being right. so important. And where has it been? We've been cutting athletics. We've been cutting music programs. These are the things that have been cut. Well... You know, they say that people who study music do better in their Academic. primary Absolutely. academics, Absolutely. you know? Absolutely. And so we need to remember that it's the whole package. You can't keep cutting out pieces of it and expect yep. to get the same. Mm -hmm. And so uh, it's people like you that are keeping the interest high. They're educating each other. You're making the world a better place to live. Those children are going to come over here from Ireland. They're going to have an experience here. They're going to get to meet some people in this culture here and just make the world a little bit smaller and a little bit That's right nicer place to live. So we're very excited about it, you know? I'm looking forward to it. It's, it's been a lot of work, but I'm very grateful to Chief Don't Wells. blame me. I do, I've only done a little bit. Wells, I've only done a little bit. Um, so you're going to have the big bass drum at the high school no, that night? I don't know if I'm playing that night. That's, yeah, probably. Well, come on. Yeah. Probably. People was, always ask me. You, uh, were talking, you were talking about the Irish contribution of music. It's unbelievable that Last night and Tell, tonight. Tell folks here. Last, oh, yeah. Last Listen, night and tonight. He keeps thinking he's on the radio. That's right. <laughs> Last night and tonight, of course, 80,000 people at Fenway Park to That's see right. Paul, McCartney. Paul McCartney. And Paul McCartney's grandparents were forced to emigrate from Ireland, head to Liverpool, along with John Lennon's and also with uh, the other one. And subsequently, she ran out of space. Uh, <laughs> oh, go, keep going, go. <laughs> well, so then, and, and then... At the same time, then Van Morrison was performing, who, of course, is from Belfast, and, of course, is in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, and he performed on Tuesday night at the Wang, all of them sold out. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, there's a tremendous influence, Irish music influence, in all various genres. You had mentioned Johnny Cash. Johnny Cash had a love affair with Ireland. Mm -hmm. And as a matter of fact, when he wrote that song, The Forty Shades of Green, he was leaving Dublin, he was leaving Shannon to go back to the United States. He looked down, he says, oh my God, and that was the inspiration. That's right. Of course, Johnny was courting at that time, and he loved the Irish girls, you see. <laughs> so, he was, <laughs> so he was able to put a little bit in there about it, but it, there isn't any question at all about it that it's, it's, uh, it's a great catalyst and... Quite frankly, I think in many cases, as far as the Irish are concerned, it's the glue that kept them together during very trying times. Well, folks, we're going to wrap up this pilot show. Remember, it's going to be Thursday, September 3rd at Milton High School Auditorium. We have the Artane Band from Dublin, Ireland. We have the Boston Gaelic Pipes and Drums. We have the Milton High School Strings and Ensembles. And all they need now is to get a ticket. Is there tickets? And tickets are available at the Irish Cottages in Braintree and West Roxbury. And they're also available at the Green Hills Bakery um, on Adam Street in Dorchester. Are they available in Milton? Tell me where to go. Come on, the, the Fruit Center. We'll figure We're going to talk to Mike. We'll, 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 we'll talk to Mike. Mike, you're watching. We need you to sell some tickets here. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much. Okay. So, hey, we'll see you that night. I, I'm putting it on my calendar. It's going to be a lot of fun. Perfect. Folks, thank you for watching this part of the Talk of the Town. Stay tuned. We have Eileen Mar coming up with the movie review, with the movie review section. Thank you again. Bye bye.